Hey everybody, my name is Carrie Estock. I am the team lead and agent for Vitamin C in Philadelphia. And I want to talk to you today about the top 10 skills that will get you hired and promoted. Uh, before we get started, I just uh, want to tell you a little bit about myself. You're probably wondering, who is this lady and why is she telling me uh, the top 10 skills that will ha get me hired and promoted? Um, I am, uh, like I said, the team lead and agent for Vitamin C in Philly. Uh, I work with job seekers every day and the clients who hire them. Um, prior to that, I was a hiring manager for about 10 years. Uh, I was an in-house PR manager, an in-house copywriter. I was also a freelance writer, so I know what it's like to be a freelancer and someone looking for work. Um, for the last five years, I spent my time as a community manager for several leading uh, ratings and review sites across the country. Let's get started. Um, so, like I said, I want to talk to you about the top 10 skills that will get you hired and promoted. You want to get hired and promoted, right? Uh, we usually focus on your resume, so your job experience, your education, your learned skill set. But we find that that's only about half of what really gets you in the door and gets you moving up that ladder. Um, but the good thing is these aren't just skills for when you're around the office. These are all-around guidelines for harmonious living, I like to think of them as. They never go out of style. Uh, and the thing is, they may seem obvious, but you would be surprised how many people don't do these. So as you're going along, uh, if you see things that you already know and you think it's just kind of common sense, think again, um, because you'll find a lot of people don't actually do these things. Um, these are known as soft skills, and they can really make the difference. Um, you can have a fantastic skill set in terms of what you know how to do, but as you know, your job is always going to require you to work with a manager and possibly a team. Um, everybody's streamlining and simplifying and trying to do more with less. So here's the things you need to know to hold on to your job or to get that job that you're looking for. Here's where you stand out from the crowd. So the first one is egomaniacs need not apply. Uh, the phrase team player is a little cheesy and overused, but it is completely true. So when you are looking for a job or you're looking to move up in your current job, leave your ego at the door. Uh, I just recently worked with a client who called me and is looking to replace somebody who's in a job currently because she's not the right fit. And so I asked some questions. Um, you know, can she do the job? Does she struggle every day? Does she come in late? Does she leave early? Things like that. And the client said, no, she, she does what she needs to do, but she has kind of an attitude problem. She rolls her eyes. She gives off the vibe that she's a little better than everybody else. Um, she gets annoyed when she's asked to do things because she thinks that she's better than that. At least this is the client's perception. Um, that's not great, guys. You need to have a positive attitude. Um, you don't have to like everything you're there to do, but you need to give the attitude and the impression to your manager and to the other people on the team that you're there to get the job done have fun while you're at it, but you know, you're there to do a, to do a job and have a good attitude about it. Don't be a Debbie Downer. Um, also, a big thing is be open to feedback and criticism. You'd be surprised how many people really take it personally. And the thing is, when you're working, it's not personal. This is how you're going to grow in your position. This is how you're going to get those future opportunities, whether it's in the company that you're at now or the company that you're looking to go to. And it's a big part of how your manager views you. Um, think about the fact that, you know, this manager that I just talked to is really going to replace this person because of their attitude. You don't want to be the person that gets replaced because you have a bad attitude. Think about, again, the feedback that you get. Um, how well do you react when you get the feedback? And do you incorporate it into your work? Your manager's watching for that, and they're going to be able to tell if you step up and incorporate that feedback or if you just kind of, you know, again, roll your eyes and go on to the next, next task. And a big thing is be accountable. When you mess up, admit it. Admit that you made a mistake. A lot of managers are okay with that as long as you're evolving your skill set, as long as you're talking to them, communicating them. But most of all, learn from your mistakes. Number two, flexibility isn't just for yogis. All successful companies are growing and changing. Um, we like to use the phrase adapt or die around here, and it's true. It sounds harsh, but it's true. Um, just because you learn something one way, whether it's at your last job or in school, doesn't mean it's the only way to do it. So be open to finding new ways to do things, finding new ways to solve problems. That's really going to help you get ahead. Number three, think like a ninja. Always be one step ahead in your career planning, whether you're looking for a job or you're looking to move up in your current job. 
when you're putting your resume together or you're out there interviewing, frame the conversation and frame the way that you pitch yourself about the job you want. Don't always concentrate on the jobs that you've had. Really think about how you can talk about the skill set that you have and how that applies to what you're looking to do moving forward. Another thing is dress for success. Here is where knowing your corporate culture is essential. If you don't know what to wear to an interview, talk to your recruiter. I get questions like that all the time from the talent that I work with. Um, we talk about what the culture is like there. Uh, you know, some places, everyone's walking around in shorts and flip-flops. That's cool. Other places, they are business casual, and, you know, they're going to be wearing um, slacks and shirts or dresses, you know, a, a little more businessy there. So, really, it's important to know the culture before you walk into that first interview. There are places that actually showing up to your interview in a suit can hurt you. Um, you know, I know that that's kind of the traditional thing that we think about, let's put on a suit, let's step up and go to an interview and show people kind of how, um, you know, responsible we can be. And that's fantastic if that fits the culture. Um, you don't want to hurt your chances of getting the job because you walked in and you didn't ask the right questions in advance and you don't know the culture. At the same time, it's not cool to show up to a job dress super casual. So again, even if it's the kind of environment where people are wearing shorts and t-shirts, you don't want to wear shorts and t-shirts to your interview. If you know it's laid back, kick it up at least one notch. And again, you can talk to your recruiter about this. Um, we're great resources and we love to answer these questions. Uh, if you're not working with a recruiter, uh, and maybe this is an interview uh, that you're going in through on your own, make sure that you've asked these questions to your contact within the company. Once you've landed that job, take your fashion cues from your manager and your manager's manager. The old saying is, dress for the job you want, not the job you have, and it's really true. Another thing in terms of uh, thinking like a ninja is you want to show the boss that you care. Managers aren't mind readers. If you are interviewing for a job or you're up for a promotion at, at your work, if you want the job, ask for it. If you want to grow in your current position, make sure your manager knows. Oftentimes, your manager has resources at their fingertips in terms of providing additional training, um, giving you mentor, mentee opportunities that can really help you grow um, in your current position. So if you want that, ask for it. You'd be surprised how many people just assume that their boss knows that they want a promotion or their boss assumes that they want a promotion. Um, your boss may not know that. So if these are things that are important to you, make sure to speak up. Number four. To infinity and beyond. Make sure that you're going above and beyond what you're hired to do. I have another client that I'm working with um, that called me and again is looking to replace somebody that is in-house because they do what they're asked to do but they're anything more. This client tells me, well yeah, she comes in, she does what I ask her to do, but she's never asked questions. She's never gone above and beyond. This will really make a difference in terms of uh, your of ability to grow within a company, grow within a department. Um, and really, if a company is, is needing to make cutbacks, this is the kind of person that's going to be the first to go. Don't be that person. The key here is you always want to strive to make your boss's life easier. That's why you were hired. Number five, find your softer side. A big key thing here is being empathetic. And being empathetic, if you don't already know, is the ability to put yourself in someone else's shoes. It's different from being sympathetic. You're not feeling sorry for them exactly, but you're feeling with them. You're really connecting with their feelings. This is a key skill when you're dealing with other people on your team, your manager, and especially clients if you work with external clients. You can use statements like, I definitely know that that's frustrating. I can understand how you feel. Or, you know, right now, you must be feeling pretty upset about this. Let me see what I can do to help. These things will go a long way. Number six, communication starts with you. Actually, it starts with a C, but do you see where I'm going with this? This rule applies whether you're dealing with your boss, a client, another team member, or your grandmother. Key things like checking your communications, whether it's email or written, for grammar and spelling. Spell check is there for a reason. It's your friend. Use it. Um, I know sometimes we get into an abbreviated culture, especially if we text a lot. Don't use the letter U when you mean to say Y-O-U. Don't use the number four when you need to say F-O-R. These are really important things, and you'd be surprised how many people don't do them. Be a good listener. Ask questions and make sure you can choose the answer. And here's where those empathy skills we were just talking about really come into play. 
Another thing is be smart about your email etiquette. Make sure you're paying attention if you reply all. Sometimes you don't want to do that. And uh, I think we can all think of instances where replying to all on an email is a really bad thing. Be tactful when you're working with people. Think about how would you want this person to communicate or respond to you. Ask for feedback from your manager, from your fellow team members, from your clients. And important, most importantly, be clear on your expectations overall. How can you know if you've achieved a goal if you don't even know what's expected of you? So really make sure to get clarification on uh, your expectations, your goals, things like that before you even get started on a project. Number seven, mind your own business. You would be surprised how many people who are either interviewing or who work for a company, they don't actually know what their company does. You need to know who they are, who's who, what do you do? Who's the competition? Where have they been and where are they going? What's your elevator pitch? You need to have an elevator pitch because first of all, you never know you'll be who you'll be in the elevator with. But second of all, you never know when you're going to be in an opportunity to um, talk about yourself or the services that your company provides and really make a difference in taking your business or your career to the next level. What are the trends in your industry? Know what's going on out there. Pay attention. And again, what's your company culture? You can save yourself from a lot of awkward moments and a lot of faux pas by knowing these things. For example, can you send an email to the president of your company? Some places you can. That's totally cool. Other places, that'll uh, probably get you a visit to HR. So you need to be careful about these things. Just know your culture. Know your business. Number eight, common sense isn't as common as you think. And we talked about that earlier. But again, these are all just great general rules for life, not just things to do when you're in the office. Do what you say you're going to do. Be accountable. Show up on time. Don't procrastinate. And prioritize your work. Make sure, again, you're communicating this to your team members, your managers, and your clients. Number nine, pay your dues. Especially for you guys out there who are entry level, just graduating or breaking into a new field, don't expect to be running the company within the first year. A lot of people kind of have um, a sense of entitlement, I guess. Uh, that's not cool. Really, you're there to get your foot in the door, to get your career started. Sometimes it's not fun. Um, making copies isn't always fun. Um, filing things isn't always fun. But you'd be surprised. Putting your dues in and paying them now will get you where you will be later. Take the time to learn. Pay attention, ask questions. Again, going back to all the things that we've just talked about. They're really important and they'll make a difference, not just in growing your skill set, but in the way that you're perceived by your manager and the other people within your company. Make connections, get to know people. Um, ask questions about them. Again, ask questions and listen. Um, it'll go a long way. And take initiative. Network, get out there. Attend events, join groups. Um, your alumni networks are always great resources. Uh, if you're a designer, groups like AIGA are great. If you do social media, a lot of cities have social media clubs. There's a great uh, resource in every location, whether it's physical or online, that will really help you grow your skill set and your connections. Speaking of resources, always keep learning. Stay up to date on trends and new developments within your industry. So whether you're a copywriter or a designer, project manager, or a social media specialist, there are great resources online and in person that can help you grow your skill set. Read blogs, subscribe to newsletters, be active on LinkedIn. There are a ton of groups on there. If you just do a search of what you're interested in, you'll get a ton of resources there. Join professional groups. Again, attend events. There's a lot of stuff going on in cities, on campuses out there that you can get involved with. Um, also here at Acorn and Vitamin T, we have great resources for our talent. Um, you found us through Summer of Learning, which is awesome, and we're really excited about that. You can learn a ton of great things with us there. We also have a relationship with lynda.com, L-Y-N-D-A. It's a great place to grow and learn uh, some design skills as well. So check that out. Ask your recruiter about that. We'd be glad to help. And that's it. So thanks for spending time with me. I'm positive that if you spend some time thinking about these skills, developing them, asking the right questions, you'll be killing it in the job market in no time. Thanks.